today the session we are on session number 9 canada as education and career destination and our guest today is mr hemant kumar he will be shortly coming live that's his picture you can see him he is a seasoned management professional in international education space he currently works for uh, the institution called as sprout show college that's part of cibd education group as international recruitment manager for south asia and middle east uh, the college is a respected very respected college in vancouver canada and established in the year 1903 that's that makes it about more than 100 years old in that in that territory and is engaged in important higher education in various different dif disciplines something more about him he's done his engineering from himachal pradesh university he's an mba from from biases and his prior experience includes working for cambridge assessment english which is a department of cambridge university as regional management as regional <laughs> business manager in north india and at cambridge he specializes leading on partnership with schools and in higher education institutions as well as state governments for english language assessments uh this this is something like uh, what you should expect today for those who are viewing us today uh, as uh, the key takeaways from this uh, session you will learn about the study and career opportunities in canada the canadian education system and how it could probably impact you how you fit into the, those scheme of things out there in canada application and admission process we are talking about generic application and admission process which is applicable for canada and uh, getting ready for canada some key points that you should keep in mind uh, especially if you are on the you know almost you have a green signal in your mind that today or say 6 months one year down the line you have to choose canada as your destination so what exactly should you do so how how does it how does it make a difference to you and what should, what are the exact steps that you could take probably from now and going forward so i'm going to close my screen uh, share and i am going to bring uh, bring mr hemant kumar online mr hemant kumar you could please come online thank Hello. you you see him hi uh, good morning to you mr hemant uh, uh, for the for the benefit of everybody mr hemant kumar is appearing live from canada So very good morning to Hemant. Good morning, Rajiv, uh, and good evening to everybody back in India. And I thank you for a kind introduction. Hmm. All right, fine. Good to see you. Good to see you after so many days. Uh, well, yes. This session, as you know, um, you must have heard us heard me saying to the and promising to the students uh, who are attending this show, the spotlight is always on the students, as you know. uh so we are talking about students who are, and there could be probably probably some teachers professors consultants and parents too who are participating in this show so we have to keep our um you know the entire discussion in that frame of mind so that everybody tries to benefit out of that um that's it uh, that's that's the broad introduction which i wanted to give to mr hemant and for the audience uh, as i said that this session is primarily for studying in canada i'm going to give you some introduction to this uh, some problem i think mr hemant has gone off but he will be appearing short, shortly as things have started to open up gradually after the pandemic break i can say that we are again on popular country options that uh, you, that the students generally keep in mind remember guys we had about uh, we had couple of sessions uh, sometime back on usa as a study option um and so many of you might have also attended that uh, especially who are kind of you know open in your mind as to whichever country they want to get into especially if north america is on your radar on the hot topic today is studying in canada and the career um, you know career steps you should take from now onwards to get into canada shortly as you know we are a study abroad company consulting company and we have been receiving this question this set of questions from many students and many recruitment agents that are hooked on to us from almost entire country and the adjoining countries that uh, you know are uh, on uh, on our platform which is nepal bangladesh sri lanka etc if not india where and when uh where where uh, these guys should go so that's a student that's a question which mostly the you know the students keep that in mind and most of them you know the first thing that comes to their mind is obviously 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 north america which which is um, which is is absolutely a no brainer most likely on this show too many students might have this question what is the right time to apply and if canada is the right place to go to Canada the name is enough i should say the dream country it's a dream, it's a dream country for many students to you know to study to live no doubts about that at all if anyone thinks of north america as a goal i truly think uh, you know this is right this decision is right for for a variety of reasons we'll explore what are those reasons and what could they be 
So students and parents, on your behalf, we will be take we'll be talking to Hemant and his views on how is Canada as a study and a career destination and how that impacts you today. Viewers, please have your queries ready. You can have your points typed on Zoom or play or Facebook platform live. We will take your points besides what we have at a later point of time if they have not already been discussed. And if they are if they can be discussed, if they're not private, they're not personal, we will take those questions surely. So here we are. Uh, with Mr. Hemant on panel today to take some key points about studying in Canada. But before, uh, as I said in the right in the beginning, we will have certain, you know, poll questions uh, that will go to audience. And uh, in fact, I should I should say this is an opening poll itself, which is coming, which is which will come to you shortly, on your screen, especially for those who are on um, the Zoom platform. And from that will be the place where we will get into the first thing first. Okay, what you see on your screen. Is the first question for those who, who are not able to see that. Uh, oh yes, it is there on the slide two. If you want to study in North America and given a choice, your country's choice shall be USA first, Canada later, Canada first, USA later, no preference wherever I get the admission. Guys, you have just 15 seconds of time. Please poll, please quickly fill up your polls. Done. Okay, fine. So that's done. I should end polling. Um, it's uh, uh, Himanji. You can you can probably see here that since this is actually a, a Canadian uh, audience that is exploring uh, about how to go forward, there are about sixty two percent of people who will place Canada first, but there's quite a big number which is like twenty four percent or so who will still place USA first, Canada later, and surprisingly, there is a fourteen person who do not who does not mind going wherever they want to go to. They're right. quite open in their exercise. Anyway, without uh, you know uh, spending more time on this, I will leave this discussion to you. Of what is your opinion, according to you, actually whether what should be um, you know what should students uh, do? Canada as a study destination versus USA, both are now North American countries and pretty, you know, pretty nice. Both the students currently um, should pursue Canada as their goal, USA as their goal, or whatever. Right. Sure. So thank you for what's that. Your, what's, your, what's your outlook that the student, that the audience should worry about? Sure. No, I think, I think it's a very fair output, uh, which has come. Like, I was kind of expecting that because uh, when you see that 62% of the audience wants uh, to study in Canada, uh, that is an increasing trend that we are seeing across the globe, especially from South Asian countries, right? Mm. Especially in like India, uh, in Sri Lanka, Bangladesh. So in fact, um, before moving uh, like deep into India, one of the facts is that Bangladesh is one of the top five countries growing for uh, the Canadian education. Like amongst them are also Morocco and some of them Vietnam. Uh, so like that is the craze for Canada. So Canada is kind of emerging as a powerhouse for international education. And this trend is not something that is very new, I would say. Um, so just to put in some numbers there, Canada has been growing uh, uh, since the last two decades now. So Canada has grown over, uh, again, I, I, just to put some numbers there once again. Um, so Canada was uh, doing around 100,000 students uh, back in 2000. Uh, that's where uh, I think US, UK, and, and Australia just started to pick up. So, but Canada was nowhere. Uh, but then Canada grew, uh, Right, really, really, very, very fast, and and the growth has been phenomenal. And um, so, uh, and and as as we speak today, uh, so in twenty nineteen, Canada had around six thousand, like more than six thousand, um, like six hundred thousand students, um, international students in Canada, which is a phenomenal growth, I would say. So I think that is trend. Uh, is is it's just has not been very, very visible. And um, and simply because of that, um, I would say that there has been more than three times growth. Um, in the last 10 years, which is around 200% growth, uh, which as an international destination, uh, and that also of scale of Canada, uh, is something which is um, which is not missed uh, anybody's um, uh, horizon, and that's where students are very keen. Uh, while at the same time, with all due respect to United States, which has always been the pioneer for international education, yeah. um, um, still, if we, if we just look at the numbers, purely numbers today, if we talk from global education point of view, um, some 5 million students are currently studying abroad and a majority share of that, which is around 22%, uh, is still in United States. 
but when we see Canada growing, uh, we understand that they are eating into the share of the United States and uh, for, for various reasons, like for known reasons, and we probably would be discussing some of those reasons, uh, uh, perhaps uh, like visa or cost of study, and there are so many other factors which comes into play. And that's where Canada's reputation as a very, very multicultural and a very safe destination is something which we are probably resonating in the results in your poll as well. Great. Uh, these students, sometimes, you know, as you saw in the poll results also, they are double-minded. They do not, they, there's no particular preference to, you yes. know, for them. Uh, they can go to Canada, they can come to Canada, yes. they can come to yeah. US or vice versa. Yes. Eventually, certain, some, certain number yes. of people might have a plan to actually get into USA as yes. a destination, but they got yes. the admission in Canada for whatever reason. Yes. The university was good. Uh, that was the first thing to happen. So they just took it. If somebody somebody decides to you know, study in um, study in Canada because that's the way it is, and um, after the program gets through, he wants to work in the U.S. So, so how convenient is that to take up a job in U.S. after studying in Canada? Uh, it is. It is. Uh, we we consider Canada as a backdoor entry to United States. Um, mm -hmm. Like you are into the international education background, as you would be knowing, uh, like students were going to New Zealand and then again, we, we just kind of digressing, but New Zealand is again a preferred destination because of uh, the uh, way they have handled the entire COVID situation. And, and I remember my friends going to New Zealand and with a very clear aim of entering Australia. So I think that that analogy applies here as well, uh, although at a bigger level, because Canada in itself is a huge destination, like it's a, it's, a, it's a mega destination at this point in time. But mm. once you are in North America, um, students uh, would, would probably start their studies at uh, say Canadian, uh, Canadian higher education institutions. Once they finish uh, their, uh, their studies, they are eligible for postgraduate work permit, uh, which would help them gain the necessary experience. And then being in the same geography, it becomes much more easier for students to apply for companies in America. And, and it's, a, it's a faster processing. And uh, like from a long-term perspective, once you're a Canadian citizen, um, you have a special agreement with US wherein you can probably even stay in Canada and work in US. We were last, on our last discussion, we were just discussing something like that. Yeah, so I think it becomes nice. fairly easy uh, because A, because of the recognition of you being in Canada, B, your work experience in North America. So I think all these factors kind of count towards uh, your faster processing and rather easy processing. And I would say not only uh, not only United States, uh, like once you are a Canadian citizen in future, uh, I think the world opens to you because of the global degree that you have gained. So I, I have known instances where people uh, have uh, studied in Canada, uh, gained a citizenship, and then moved to United, moved to Dubai or moved to Europe as well. So I think that that's where it becomes much more. Uh, I would not say very easy, but I think there, it certainly opens a door out there. Great. Uh, let me ask you this question. You know, USA is primarily a single single language country, but Canada is a yes. two language country. The world yes. knows about it. You know, yes. the, fr the French language and uh, and the English language. So, uh, what's your comment as to do you do the students need to be English comes naturally for all Indian students. You know, yes. in this context. So, do you yes. do they have to get into learning French too, especially from a job perspective later point of time, or it's okay to go with English only? Rajiv, not necessary. I'll talk from a personal example. I've been here for two years. Um, okay. Unfortunately, I don't know French at this point in time, so that's on my goal. But um, after coming to Canada, uh, I realized that um, probably French is something not, that I'm not looking at at this point in time. I'll rather probably think doing the Spanish and probably a lot of students also do Mandarin these days. Uh, so the idea is that uh, while Canada is a like bilingual country in terms of Canada and French uh, being, uh, sorry, English and French being English recognized English. and far. Uh, however, a uh, majority of the places in Canada, you could fare very, very well uh, without having any knowledge of French. And I've never faced any difficulty. Um, like let's say talk about Ontario or in fact, rather than going this way, it's only Quebec, uh, which is there. Uh, one of the provinces out there, uh, which is a French colony in the past. So that is where you would see that uh, majority of the people would use French. You would see signboards in French, uh, but that's not a limitation if you're in other parts of Canada. So it's kind of good to know, but not mandatory. You can... Uh, yes, uh, it's good to know. Yeah, it opens maybe some more uh, job opportunities. Um, but uh, again, absolutely not mandatory. You can very well survive in Canada without having the knowledge of uh, any second language. Okay, okay, okay. 
uh, international students. Now, this is a very generic question. I must ask you. It does it does not apply to Canada only. It applies everywhere. But this is some question which is repeatedly asked um, or is believed by or trusted by students. So I would like you to you know guide the students as to how they should take this kind of question. Sure. They feel that. एक बार मुझे मेरा एडमिशन हो गया किसी अमेरिकन या कैनेडियन कॉलेज में कैनेडियन कॉलेज में या यूनिवर्सिटी में अच्छी यूनिवर्सिटी में तो मेरी लाइफ हो गई सेट अब मुझे कुछ करना नहीं पड़ेगा एंड माय लाइफ इज सेट इन केस आई गेट एडमिशन गुड एडमिशन इनटू अ गुड यूनिवर्सिटी और गुड कॉलेज हाउ ट्रू इज दैट एंड डू यू हैव टू स्टिल स्ट्रगल ड्यूरिंग एंड पोस्ट कोर्स और नो सो आई थिंक दिस क्वेश्चन इज नॉट ओनली रिलेटेड टू कनाडा आई थिंक दिस इज मोर मोर टू डू विद द एज ग्रुप दैट दो स्टूडेंट्स आर इन यस यस बट इफ आई रिमेंबर माय इयर्स I used to have a very similar um, thought process that once I'm into a college and once I'm into a university. Back then, when I when I joined Sim Voices in 20, 2009, um, I remember that we thought that oh, Sim Voices over here, so we subset here. But um, so I think that's the same thought process of that like um, like they've just done with that either they're teenagers or they're just like uh, young adults, and that's what they think that uh, having a international uh, uh, having or having a uh, study visa. to travel and fly abroad uh, would help them to get settled in life but i think uh, i think it's not even the starting point of the struggle um, I, i i always tell my students that uh, this is the best time of life you have right uh, right now what you are seeing uh, i know you there's a lot of competition there's a lot of stress around exams but um, once you land here you see that uh, it's all together a different level of uh, engagement that your students uh, like the students would be doing like whether it's part time work networking academics and managing your finances i think there are a lot of factors which will go into the journey and uh, and i can just uh, just want to kind of uh, uh, so what i would want to students to kind of know very well that uh, of course it's a great journey uh, but you need to be prepared that uh, there will be a lot of uh, life would be asking a lot on you and once you are there i think that journey would help you to only become stronger but yes uh, i think struggle will not end or kind of in two years uh, i think it's just again the starting point and then once you are established in the industry you have some hands on experience at least give yourself 3 to 5 years when you move into a new country to settle into the country and then into the culture as well great uh uh i will um, you know try to check with you on how easy or what are the complexities involved in the visa Uh, process the grant visa grant process especially for non indians or the regions where there is no um, con- can- canadian consulate or an embassy like nepal etc there is no con- right. you know there is no consulate there is no embassy so everything right. is routed right. routed via right. delhi so right. what what are the complexities right. so i think like i would like, like to answer this question from uh, like uh, two uh, two ways uh, i would like to answer this question in two ways one uh, regarding uh, the uh, uh, ease of visa so that is in itself is a topic to be discussed and and in fact when we did our first poll today morning uh, like uh, today uh, is about us versus canada a reason why canada has become very popular over the years is because of the not so friendly visa process i would say of us versus uh, a, a very very progressive visa uh, process uh, especially the study permit process uh, for canadian institutions in fact if you i know we'll be discussing something related to covid in the later half of the presentation but just to give you some points like from day 1 uh, when covid uh, started spreading in canada i think uh, canadian immigration uh, has been on the top of the game by providing very very clear um, a very clear rules uh, uh, they have been very vocal about what they are planning to do and especially with uh, supporting the online studies and you know that there has been direct comparison while canada has been supporting the online studies uh, while us uh, mistakenly came up with a kind of uh, uh, an announcement that if you are studying online on completely uh, you might have to leave the country of course they did a backtrack on that but that that kind of goes and shows why canada has moved like six times in the last 20 years versus uh, there has been a decrease in market share in us so overall canada irrespective of the student is coming from whichever country is very supportive of students uh, because it's a major contribution to the canadian economy and and to the culture as well and talking about our other south asian countries like nepal bangladesh i i know i work with these countries as well uh, sri lanka where they don't have a embassy or a high commission office uh then the applications gets routed through india right and it's and it's the rule globally it's not only about these countries even if somebody is in 
say in so if so if I talk about Middle East as well, because that is something I handle as well. So if somebody is from Iran, the application might go through Turkey or through Dubai. So that that's everywhere, and that but not not to worry because um, that's how the system is. The system is very organized, and most of these are online applications. So, but it's just routing them through. So the stage one is always processing and submission is online, and then it's routing through these countries where they have a dedicated VFS office, uh, which are centers uh, which are authorized to uh, issue the study visa and the study permits and all the other kind of visas uh, for Canadian immigration. So I think it's it's not a challenge. Yes, COVID is posing challenge because VFS has consistently remained closed in India. Uh, but the good news was that I heard that U.S. Embassy is opening. So similarly, we are expecting good news to come soon with respect to Canadian uh, visa processing as well. Great. Uh, you know, the Indian education system, Hemant, you know, is a 15-year education system. Unless yeah. we talk about the new education policy, which is going to be implemented, I guess, yeah. next year onwards. But until now, it's a 15-year education system. What it means is the students undergo the 12th, 10 plus 2, which is up to 12th followed by three years, generally three years of um, bachelor's, unless he's done a, an engineering or a, something else, which is like going to take him more. And uh, the North America generally respects the 16 year education system. So yes. how does uh, you know Canada treat the 15 year versus 16 year? So I think um, a very relevant point, yes, that, that's true. And, and there's some background of that. Uh, we have been a British colony, right? And that, that's where uh, uh, yes. that's where the three years bachelor degree comes into the picture. Mm -hmm. uh, and traditionally, it has continued. Even if you talk of uh, education in UK today, there are still masters as one year, and there are majority of bachelors, which would be three years. Um, so I think it took time. But however, if you talk from North American point of view, yes, they are mm -hmm. purely a four-year bachelor and a two-year master's. Uh, so and that, that's something that they would always like to see on the grades. But okay, with time... With time, they recognize that, uh, uh, like uh, having a three years education uh, at the undergraduate level doesn't necessarily mean that there is lack of competency. So there has been an increasing ex uh, acceptation from universities and colleges. Our colleges, there has never been a problem uh, in Canada. Uh, and if I just want to again put some facts into place, and we may just talk about that in a bit as well, uh, that majority of the students, like so, Canada is a very very attractive market even for colleges, right? While uh, traditionally, when we used to talk about study abroad, we always used to relate it to universities abroad. US has been that kind of market. Largely, Australia has been that kind of market. UK has been that kind of market. But when you talk about Canada, it's slightly different. And that's why if you see the geographies, uh, why Punjab, Gujarat, and South, uh, let's say Kochi, uh, has been the biggest uh, like kind of exporters uh, in terms of the students or biggest uh, source of students for them because uh, there's a preference of college diplomas over a degree right um, and if i talk from canada point of view canadian point of view it's it's almost at par uh, globally uh, but uh, and you know that china and india are the largest sources um, so china would always preferably uh, going for a degree but uh, in in uh, in canada uh, the numbers are like in these are last year numbers around 150,000 students preferred going into a college and only 50,000 or 52,000 students went in for a uh, for a degree. So that's the kind of spread. So for most of the students who are planning to go in for a college program, whether at a UG level or a PG level, this question does not even uh, make any impact on their future plans, right? So there's there's a complete acceptance of three years bachelor degree. At the master's level, yes, there would there are universities I know that do not accept it. But then at the same time, you would have options, and just to name a few, uh, York University and even UBC accept three-year programs uh, for the bachelor degree. And uh, there's another thing which kind of goes into it. Uh, so if it is NAT accredited, which most of the institutions are in India now, like all the top rated institutions. So especially somebody who's looking at a, at a master's degree level, I'm assuming that would come from a bachelor degree uh, with decent percentages from, from a relatively decent institution or a highly ranked institution. So those would be NAC. So NAC is another thing which goes into uh, the, uh, the accreditation really holds a lot of value. And just to sum it all, it's not only the degree or the duration of the degree which the institutions are looking at. They are looking at a lot of other factors. So it's a holistic vision. Um, so students can always figure out more options. Um, it's not a stop point uh, that if you don't have a three, a four-year bachelor degree, you cannot really come for master's in Canada. All right, good. That throws in a lot of clarity for students who are into that. Uh, yes. Um, 
study so that's not that's a point of worry at all you can point. always find options okay yeah. okay so guys uh, audience i have uh, viewers i have now one more poll question coming on your screen shortly here it goes please participate on this as soon as possible 15 seconds to go the people who are on fb facebook live they can also see only screen only the screen not they cannot participate sorry yeah rk the poll is not coming sorry sorry it's coming in all right i'll read it out for you i'm done with 12th in my country i'd like to move abroad uh, uh, move abroad to as, um, as soon as possible right step is bachelor's masters abroad take a career out there at the same time or i'll take a non traditional program that fetches me a good job overseas now it's a slightly tricky question but i would like you you guys to go through and respond quickly please quick okay i have to terminate this now here are the results mr hemant you see this results these results yes okay so generally everybody tries to take uh, the you know the traditional route of bachelors or masters abroad but there are a set of 35% students um, who would say a non traditional program that fetches me a good job overseas now what exactly i'll i'll remove the screen and uh, i would like you to give some enlightenment to what is a non traditional program very interesting question it's one of my, my favorites to talk and i can actually kind of plan a session on just on this question itself mm -hmm. because i think it's so relevant uh, when parents come to us and when we're playing mm -hmm. um so tasa tasa asia in mumbai and uh, uh, they have offices across india have been doing phenomenal job um, so i'm sure with your consulting experience as well uh, you would have in you would be getting this question almost at a daily level um yes, and, this, and 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 i this this question is not a yes and a no or a choose one over two i think this, this it has to do with a lot of factors like uh, Certainly, you start with the student's interest uh, because I cannot really enforce a decision on a student uh, when the when the child is not really ready uh, to move into a particular set of program. Uh, but having uh, said uh, that, uh, at the same time, it's very important that if you see that 65-35, uh, this used to be a 90-10 or a 80-20 at some point in time, where in traditional programs were the only programs which the student wanted to um, take. And it's not only in international education, but I also see that in domestic, um, in, in, even at a India level, uh, when we are going for a higher education or post-secondary, uh, students are exploring options now. And the reason why, one reason for that is that parents are more supportive. Um, there's more exposure, and see, uh, because of the internet, there are so many uh, more options that a student can see. So whereas artificial intelligence probably was not even there like 10 to 15 years back. Uh, or, or at that time, um, the artificial intelligence was cloud computing. So all these trends were emerging. But today, if you see, uh, eight out of ten top new age careers are all technology related, right? Uh, so so whether, whether that's related to uh, film filmmaking, whether that's related to um, I would say healthcare industry, um, new things, health unit clerks. So th these are careers which I never really heard of uh, when I did my engineering and MBA. Uh, for us, it was pretty simple. Like, uh, if I've taken sciences, I'm probably ending up at an engineering college. And if from there, if I'm I'm kind of engineer, I'll end up with a coding job. Or if I'm I'm, I'm more inclined towards management, and that's what I did. I just went ahead and completed my management uh, without any second thoughts about it. But today, um, students have much more exposure. Uh, that starts at a very early age, and they understand that most of these top paid jobs today, uh, like Amazon, was not offering jobs in India back then. Uh, Google was not there. So, uh, so all these, like to be a part of these, uh, these kind of companies, uh, they realize that they can think out of the box. And that is where I personally feel. Uh, so when you talk from Canadian economy as well, yes, there is always room for traditional courses and traditional jobs. There will always be room for that. The typical business, finance, HR, uh, within the business, there are so many different aspects like marketing, um, uh, again, human resource management, operations management, this would always stay. Uh, but at the same time, I would really encourage students to think of out of the box when I talk about careers related to healthcare, uh, which is going to be a big plus uh, over the next five to 10 years, and especially the uh, 
uh, and there's a lot of technology involved in the healthcare. Similarly, ed tech, what we are doing, we would not have imagined this 10 years back, right? Um, so talking from Canada and then there's so many people across the globe, what we have seen post COVID is something which has been a much necessary push. Uh, and who imagined that we are talking of a Canadian university offering online education in India, 50% uh, of which can be completed in India and does not really affect the postgraduate work permit. Uh, great opportunity, right? Uh, while uh, I don't want to discount the exposure with the student comes here, and that's a different topic, but coming back to our topic, I think when I talk about these careers, uh, which are non-traditional, I would just want to rename them as vocational careers for, for simplicity, because these would be, and, and when I say vocational, I'm talking about careers which are making you job ready, uh, especially uh, like even our institutions say at City University and Sprotshaw, we, we offer co-op as co-op is something what we call as internship in India. So we offer co-op programs. And the idea of offering co-op program is for the students to gain hands-on experience so that by the time he graduates, um, whether from diploma or from the degree, he's more recognized in the industry. So when we offer programs like healthcare assistant, we offer programs like early childhood education, we offer programs like health unit clerk, pharmacy assistant, dental assistant. Uh, for somebody before this, medicine was either a BDS or an MBBS, but within the same like domain of uh, studies, we have so much and all of these courses are job related, right? And, and if we understand it from, uh, from a totally employ, employer employee kind of uh, demand supply, then most of these courses are related to a future job, which you can end up getting a very soon. Because if technology has come into the healthcare sector, you need people to operate these gadgets and you need technicians. Or if, or if it's a pharmacy is a licensed profession in Canada, then you need to have that kind of a hands-on experience or a pharmacy assistant role before you can become a, a full-fledged pharmacy, pharmacy and pharmacy uh, in Canada. So I think there is a lot of focus increased demand for these kind of courses. And again, uh, tech is something which is a, a universe in itself, right? So there's so much which is happening in tech sector. Um, so students can explore all those things and I would encourage students to take that. So back back 10 years back or 20 years back, if we were doing that, there was a high risk involved. I think the risk has come down largely um, when somebody is thinking out of the box. But at the same time, I would leave the student to um, follow his interest it should not be something, as I said, which should be enforced. Uh, student, it should be discussed with the students, but it has to align with the interest of the students. Okay, so just a question within a question, uh, whatever you just yes. mentioned, you mentioned a word called co-op, okay? Uh, yes. That's understood as, a, as internship in, India, in the Indian yes. context, okay? So yes. does it, what you're trying to say is that your tie-ups with the industry wherein the internships yes. happen, that yes. leads to employment probably in the same company or the yes. same yes. sector or whatever. At least the I same think. sector. So there are high chances that the whole idea of uh, an internship or a co-op uh, is always that uh, we are providing the student an opportunity to work with this employer for six as months. As part of the program itself, right? So yes, as part of the program to be arranged by the institution. And, uh, and, and it's, so, a, it's, uh, it's like a study and work format for the students. Yes, right? it is. It is completely with a kind of 60-40 split. Uh, right. as mandated by government here. So it cannot be more than 50%, but then, uh, and it's it's one is hands-on. B, it's also like international education can be hard on your pocket. So it always provides you a great opportunity oh, for yes. hands-on experience. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, sorry, yeah. For, for, for managing your expenses uh, because you get paid hourly um, and these are Canadian wages. So of course, so hands-on experience, um, you end up saving some more money and you can utilize that for your future education or however you would want to use that. But I think that, that that is something, again, the objective for that is for a student to get into the uh, industry as soon as possible. We don't want the student to finish a wonderful program, let's say a business program or a hospitality program, and then end up in a situation when he has to do like uh, kind of non-related jobs. You mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, so you, you don't want to finish a business program at a top college and then end up uh, working at a McDonald's, right? These are two different things. Well, of course, with all due respect, like hospitality programs would end up being there, right? So there, there are so many roles, but you would want to study uh, and then graduate and then move into your uh, relevant sector as soon as possible. So I think that's the whole idea. So I would encourage students to um, look at these courses. Uh, there are a lot of courses available. Um, and of course, uh, you need to look at what background you're coming from as well, because admission criteria 
uh, stringent as well at the same time. Great. I think that was a um, quite an eye opener for many students who might be looking for a slight deviation, slightly going off road, but with a guaranteed uh, you know income source at the later point of time. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Emanji. Uh, one small quick question. You know, USA has went into the limelight uh, some time back uh, because of racism, because of uh, you know discrimination applied uh, everywhere, especially in the jobs or the universities, yeah. etc. Yeah. Does does Canada also this kind of uh, racism is seen uh, in open or no? Um, not really. Uh, Canada, by and large, uh, why Canada is a very popular destination to study abroad is because uh, uh, it's one of the top reasons why Canada is becoming so popular is because of its popularity as a very, very safe and a multicultural city. Um, so or, or, or all the cities out here. So whether that's uh, BC, whether that's Ontario, all these provinces, uh, Canada as a, as a country is considered very safe. I think it's one of, the, we also have an index where in uh, it's considered one of the safest countries in the world to stay. And also at the same time, one of the most livable countries and also at the same time, one of the most happiest countries. Uh, so I think there are a lot of factors which goes and that that is because uh, we don't have these uh, incidents related to racial discrimination. Uh, we have not seen them happening. Uh, it's not in the news. And, and I've personally experienced in two years. So the country is very, very friendly. And since it's largely an immigrant country, the whole history is like full of immigrants, right? You have more than 180 nationalities here. And uh, all these are truly global cities. So that's where I understand this, where this question is coming from. Uh, it's, I think it's more, more coming from a safety point of view. Um, and, and that's very relevant and that's very important um, uh, for, for, for both the genders when they're, when they're thinking of coming to Canada. Uh, I would uh, kind of assure students that uh, Canada is considered as one of the very safe countries. And you would not, you would, would find a very, very visible difference between uh, the two countries that we are talking about here. Good, good, good to see that uh, the positivity that you have uh, mentioned here. Uh, sir, let me ask you one question. You know, prior to pandemic situation that started sometime in February or March this year, we've been noticing from last at least three or four years, uh, say about 2018 or 19 onwards, or even prior to that, Canadian institutions were reporting full admissions. So the waiting time was two years ahead. Yes. Okay. So, so I don't know what is the situation today, uh, but if that situation reoccurs after the pandemic thing settles down sometime, what is the right time to start thinking and start applying or start preparing for a UG or a PG admission? How much time gap is enough for Canada? So, this is a very uh, critical issue. Yes, it's, it's a valid question again. Um, as you said, uh, the process involves thinking, it involves preparing, and then it involves applying, and then preparing to travel. So if the student realizes that there is a, a there's a life cycle, it doesn't happen that I'm the fourth year of my VTEC and I want to go abroad. Yes, you may want to, but uh, I would encourage students to start working on that dream uh, and give yourself time. And when I say time, I would say like, it's a very one one, it's, the, it's one of the most life-changing events, right? At this station was one of the most crucial decisions for all the students who are going to see this presentation and 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 everybody who comes in there it's a big decision of your life right and the stakeholders and a lot of stakeholders are involved and at the same time uh, at the same time stakes are very very high whether it's related to financial or leaving your home country or or just starting a new uh, career or a new life there so i think it involves a lot of thinking and and planning and for which I would really encourage students to have a window of at least 18 to 24 months before they are thinking to fly, uh, that they should be giving themselves uh, because it would involve probably, um, and, 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 and I'm sure that uh, Dasaisha can kind of talk more on that, uh, whether it's related to shortlisting of the universities, deciding a right program. I think firstly, it starts with choosing a country. Uh, it depends now, it could, it could choose a program, then choose a country, or it could be uh, right. choose a country and then choose a program it, again there are so so, so many sub factors whether you have a relative there uh, what are the future prospects what are the postgraduate work permit rights etc um, so i think all these decisions and then once you have decided a country and a program then you need to start searching and there could be when you start searching there could be thousands of institutions right offering you the same program almost at the same price with the same benefits how do you go about and choose the right program and that's where i think uh, you need experts and once you are into that uh, life cycle, and then you need to probably supplement, um, uh, you need to provide your, uh, maybe other test results like GRE, GMAT, 
uh, IELTS, SAT, TOEFL, Duolingo, it could be anything, right? So you may need time to prepare for that. And once everything is done, universities and institutions will pay their own time for the processing of the application, which could range anything between six to 12 months. Uh, it could be faster as well. Um, and uh, Canada is relatively faster than other countries on this point of view. I've seen even application results coming in one week as well. So even we do that at times. Um, but at the same time, that's one part of the cycle. And, and then once you have the um, offer letter in place, uh, finances would play a very big role and then visa processing. So I think it's, it's, it's a journey in itself before you start your international journey. So please, uh, students, um, give yourself sufficient time uh, so that you don't end up taking, uh, making a wrong decision uh, because it's difficult and it's very expensive to backtrack on, on decisions related to international or study abroad. Yeah. Great. So, I mean, uh, yes, you mentioned quite a few things, but again, question within a question. I know, in fact, everybody knows that most of the time there is a lot of overlap between the preparation required from students point of view for North America as such, uh, both Canada as well as USA. But should the student keep something in, some things in mind in terms of, you know, amending their plan or a personal study plan if they are still studying? Uh, should they do any preparations two years beforehand or 18 months beforehand? And what should they be? Uh, yes, they should, uh, because profile building, as I said, I think I would like to kind of put it as profile building, uh, because you yeah. need to know uh, that once you move into international uh, in, a, in any in foreign country, uh, you may not be able to do what you have been doing. Like, uh, for example, if I have three goals to kind of cover in India, like whether I want to do a course in Excel or I want to do a digital marketing before I move, rest assured, once you are into your own course or into your university, you may not have time at hand. So both from that profile building that if you have certain goals that you would want to achieve uh, related to your profile, um, you must accomplish that before you uh, kind of move abroad. So, uh, and of course it's an ongoing process, but uh, so what I'm trying to say, you, you need to manage your time well. And that is why I said 18 to 24 months is something that you should be looking at uh, because there are other factors that you may want to work, which would depend upon the country, uh, which would again depend upon uh, the university requirements, et cetera. I think uh, you also hinted some time back, this is 18 to 24 months is to, to be for resume enhancements or CV building or whatever it is. So that accounts for, I guess, the students would like to know, should they focus on any non-academic activity also that is respected by North America as such, especially Canada? Uh, it's, always a, it's always a plus point. Uh, a holistic profile, uh, an all-round profile uh, would always uh, kind of click yes. well. Uh, with the universities as well as employees, uh, because it shows your commitment beyond academics as well. But at the same time, uh, it doesn't mean that you ignore your academics. I just want to be very clear on that. Uh, you need to consistently focus on your academics because first and foremost thing that the un universities and colleges uh, in North America or any top destination for study abroad would look at as your academics because that's the core commitment. But at the same time, your interest and, and your passion would in, in other areas, it could be anything. Uh, it could be anything. It, it's something which is totally related to their interest. Um, also shows that how well you are able to manage your time, how passionate you are about other things. And overall, this helps us in building a good profile. Oh, yes. Just give me a minute. I'll just take a sip of water. Oh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Actually, you can take a few seconds because I'm going to throw a poll question uh, on screen for the guy, for audience. The poll is up to come. All right. So here it is on your screen. You have poll question number three. Uh, the participants on the Facebook Live can also see the screen. This is something about funding your program. Actually, it could apply anywhere, Canada or non-Canada, it doesn't matter. You got 15 seconds. Please be quick. Okay, I guess you guys are done. Still appearing. Himanji, I had, yes. uh, I think you had a glass of water. Yeah. This is the question about funding the program. Yeah, I saw that. Which, yes. Whichever program uh, they want to get into. Some, some participants have already voted. All right, I have to end the polling now and let's see the results.
All right. You can see the results, please. Yeah. All right. So it's more or less equal. That's surprising. <laughs> but what do you have to say? What should be? Uh, what's your suggestion to the students? Can I work? So when, you talk, when we talk about uh, when we talk about Canada as an international education destination, primarily, primarily, this question was: Can I work and study at the same time? And can I, you know, I take part yes, in and do a job yes. and things like that? I, I got that. Uh, so one thing is that uh, for the first, uh, uh, so uh, the first option said that I'll do a part-time. Uh, I think. Did it say, did it say a part-time course or a part-time job? Part-time program. Part-time program. Yes, yeah, so something that that is something which is not encouraged in Canada, to be honest, uh, because uh, when when a student uh, finishes the program, he applies for the postgraduate. You can you program. can you can see the results once again. Yes, I will take a part-time program, do a job. So that is something which is not recommended because students need to realize, and I think this is a uh, this is a very very basic. Um, thing that student needs to know when you are going abroad, uh, your focus for the first two years should be studies and not earning money. Yes, you need money to survive and that, that should be covered by the part-time job and that's where the rules from these countries are, are kind of pro-students uh, because they allow you to work, say, like, for example, Canada allows students to work 20 hours a week um, and that is, has to be a part-time work, like, or we call that an off-campus or on-campus work. It could be anywhere. But the idea is that student is full-time enrolled and part-time working, not the other way around. Otherwise, what happens is that the, the students will face issues or challenges when it comes to a postgraduate work permit, because it's 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 it's, it's mentioned out there uh, in the regulations on the study permit that student can only do work full time. But at the same time, there's an advantage here. Now, student can be smart because if you choose the co-op programs during the duration of the co-op, yes, student is allowed to work full time. So that's the beauty about co-op. Right. So even as a student, just because it's a part of your study component, mm -hmm. you're allowed to work 40 hours a week mm -hmm. and uh, working 40 hours a week is almost uh, is, is actually equivalent to uh, working full time in Canada, uh, which means uh, a student can make good money um, to at least that amount of money, which will help the student to take care of the uh, monthly expenses being in a foreign country. So that is something I always encourage the students that um, you can work part time, yes, um, and then co-op programs would further help you to kind of work full time for for that duration of the co-op. And at the same time, the focus should be on the studies because that's the primary, that's the main goal that you have gone uh, there for. Interestingly, there is a sizable percentage. In fact, the largest percentage said they would like to go for education loan and pay back yes. at a later point of time. Of course, that option is open. And yes. uh, this is interesting to also know that because South Asia is also engaged in important, you know, financial services, education, financial services yes. to students. So this percentage nearly matches with what kind of, you know, requests we get to, you know, help on a lookout for a loan. So yes. this is exactly a match, almost a match. But yes. the point number three was look for a scholarship based admission only. Now, what do you have to say? Right. Um, so scholarship based admission only is, is, is a... <laughs> More than a good to have, it's a wonderful thing to have, uh, but that would depends on a lot of factors like your academics, primarily academics, and and then also the financial need. Um, so if if you are applying for a, if you're showing that you have financial need, need, but if you're coming from a financial well of family, then that doesn't really go hand in hand. But at the same time, if you have a financial need and uh, you have you have good academics, you can always push that. Uh, so uh, scholarship is something, especially, uh, there, there are a lot of scholarships to offer again in Canada, uh, uh, more at the UG level than at the master's level, which is a, a trend across the globe. Mm. Uh, but at the same time, um, I would not really want you to completely rely on that because most of these decisions happen or are the result of these scholarship announcements come at a later stage of your application processing. So uh, in the beginning, you need to be prepared uh, to to have that funds because otherwise uh, your visa would be a challenge because the visa uh, an important document on your visa checklist would also be your financial statements of you and your family uh, which means that uh, if you don't have a scholarship right away which you may get after you move there because there might be an evaluation or you may have further opportunities like based on your academics in the institution uh, in the future institution so so that 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 that's that's something which I would want the student not to completely uh, leave that option, uh, like rely on that option itself, as we saw in the poll results. So it has to be a mixture of uh, your own funds, um, education loan, of course, and, and, and relying on scholarship for a part of that study, if you think that your profile is strong enough. Great. 
Let me, Hemant, ask you now for, I think quite a few participants must be looking forward to this kind of question. It's a red question. It's a highlighted question today. Hot topic for the day. Yes. How did Canada deal with pandemic and what should the students do? <laughs> Since yes. uh, USA is too close to Canada. So how did yes. uh, Canada as a country dealt with uh, this kind of uh, pandemic? Um, so I think Canada has emerged as one of uh, the countries which have done a decent job, I would say, to control the pandemic. Um, uh, especially like bordering uh, United States, uh, you saw the numbers there, right? Uh, and uh, it's, it's much better uh, in Canada when we say in terms of the control, and that's largely been possible because of the active measures taken by the government and as well as support provided by the people of uh, the country. So, um, uh, in fact, there was a stat uh, that we were using in one of our own uh, institution presentations at Vancouver, because when we talk of country, we also talk about the top cities like Australia, it could be Sydney, Melbourne, it could be New Zealand, it could be Auckland, UK again, London, and Canada, when we talk about then the top three study destinations are Toronto, uh, Vancouver, and Montreal in that order. So uh, Vancouver, among these all global cities, and again, when we talk of uh, US, we have specific cities uh, like uh, basically your top three provinces are New York, Texas, and uh, California. So uh, again, so among so these top cities out there, uh, Vancouver uh, is one of the safest cities uh, in terms of the numbers and flattening of the curve. So BC, in fact, British Columbia inside Canada did an even better job, I would say. Like we were, we were much ahead uh, in flattening the curve. Um, and that is a sense of security uh, to both parents as well as uh, the children. Uh, when when they plan to move to Canada at a at a time which is um, uh, suitable for travel. Right now, Canadian borders are closed, um, so I think that that safety aspect is there. But um, COVID has not left any country, so um, I, like India, you know the situation, right? So um, um, right now, it's not necessary. I would not recommend students traveling because, anyways, uh, Canadian Canadian government has not really opened the borders. But at the same time, what the other point I would want to um, talk about with respect to COVID that the Canadian government has been very supportive of the international education as a whole, uh, because as I said, that they realize that it's a, it's a major contribution to the Canadian economy. It's about the reputation as well. And they have been so proactive in, in announcing measures so that the students feel at comfort while starting the online classes uh, from outside Canada. And they have, they have been very vocal about because of a very important aspect as postgraduate work permit um, so students think that if they are not able to be in Canada, would that impact their postgraduate work permit? So Canada has gone ahead and announced that 50% of the studies, up to 50% of the studies, can be completed outside the country without impacting anything uh, on their work permit. So I think which is a great plus. And I think just a recent recent announcement uh, two days back from the immigration uh, is that uh, they are uh, students can complete the online study still April 30th. So if any student watching this presentation is has a uh, so valid study permit. I encourage the students to start their, their, their journey online and at a stage uh, when uh, it's more convenient and more safe to travel, uh, Canada would again open uh, its gates and arms to welcome the international students. Okay. Is there any macro uncertainties uh, you, are, you are observing, which means in, in terms of jobs post the program for the students uh, who are already in, in Canadian borders within the territory? So yes, uh, so to come down, yeah. globally it's not the best time. Uh, any any student who's graduating in 2020 is similar in when students graduated in 2010 when uh, there, was, there was a recession earlier. So I think, yes. Uh, but I think that's very, very temporary uh, because things are moving very, very fast. Uh, within months, we are seeing uh, complete opposite opposite uh, numbers whether uh, when it comes to employment ratio and unemployment rates and everything. And even from a study point of view, I was just going through some reports um, um, so while back in March, uh, there's a report from, I think, IDP Connect, which states that one in 10 students uh, uh, were thinking to drop the idea, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so that was around 10%. That number has reduced to now 5%. And then there was also a possibility of deference. So I think by and large in 2021, students are rather kind of more uh, active on, on starting their international journey because one, they realize that these countries are better managed um, and at the same time, uh, they need to kind of go ahead with their journey and their dreams. So uh, it's a very, if we, even if it is um, uh, a disturbance, I would say, uh, it's very temporary. 
um, as things move fast, uh, we have seen with the stock market as well, right? It came down to 26,000 uh, and it's back to closer to 39,000. So just a very outside comment, uh, but it's, it's very similar. It's very similar. So it's very dynamic and I would really encourage because the value of these universities and uh, studying abroad, the advantages cannot be really uh, taken away uh, because there, it, it has been years of establishment behind these uh, these countries and these institutions. So I, I strongly encourage students to um, think about in this direction very positively. And maybe, yes, you will not be able to travel. If you want to defer, please defer. Institutions are open in deferring your institutions. But yes, six months to 12 months is the time when we think that things are going to revive um, towards normalcy. All right. You mentioned something about the job certainties or uncertainties. You also mentioned some time back about, you know, the co-op kind of programs. Now, uh, you've been there with Strotshaw for quite some time and also in the Canadian, uh, Canadian uh, geography as such. Uh, what are the current uh, you know, degrees or course options that students should put on radar? Would you like to suggest anything for our students? Um, so healthcare as a sector is picking up very, very fast. Uh, there are two reasons for that. A, the current COVID situation. Uh, it's, 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 it's an awakening for everybody across the globe. Uh, so there was a lot of unpreparedness when it came to uh, healthcare sector, uh, even with the established economies and the first world countries like, you know, Italy, US, Canada, like any, everywhere and anywhere. So, uh, and B, uh, because of the uh, evolvement of this sector, um, so healthcare, uh, because one, A, COVID and other is that, yes, uh, there's, natural shortage of healthcare professionals in, in countries like these because uh, people have gone into business engineering and there is a lot of aging population so that there's there always there has always been demand if i talk from last 10 to 20 years uh, there's shortage of uh, these professionals and and when i say there's a shortage the, what it means is a it's easy to find a job in the sector and second you'll end up being paid much more uh, really much more than uh, in the than the traditional sectors and that is the beauty of choosing non-traditional uh, because uh, you're more secure uh, in the early stages of your career and, and you end up paying more, uh, you're getting being paid more, which means that you'll be able to get rid of your education loan faster. So uh, when we talk of non-traditional sectors, I would say healthcare, uh, like we have, for example, our institution only offers nursing programs at a postgraduate level. We also offer early childhood education, uh, which is not healthcare, but it's still um, like teaching in daycares, which will have uh, which will involve involve which would involve handling kids. Um, so again, again a sector which is shortage. Uh, like there's a huge demand for early childhood educators, and the very simple reason is that Canada is known for its immigration population. There are young people coming and immigrating to Canada. Both the husband and the wife are working, so their kid needs to go to a daycare center. And there has always been traditionally a shortage of that. So again, uh, a dental assistant. Uh, so healthcare as a sector, uh, early childhood education. Hospitality, yes, not the best sector to talk about in today's situation, but as, as, a, as a very, very global destination, hospitality has always been in the forefront uh, when we talk from Canadian point of view, especially Vancouver. It's one of the best places to come and study hospitality. And of course, tech, technology courses, whether it's social media marketing, whether it's, uh, again, business courses, or it's a, it's a hardcore uh, coding, whether related to artificial intelligence or uh, data analytics. So uh, there, are, there are a range of options, which I would say, uh, are non-traditional and um, in my personal opinion I would want students to experiment with that uh, especially at a UG level uh, because they still have time to cover up uh, they can try and uh, they can see if that really matches their interest because if there is a fit then there's a lot of demand globally. Correct I asked you this question about the jobs now let me ask you some question about the geography of, uh, uh, of Canada. Canada yeah. is not, uh, you know, Canadian, uh, the population in Canada is concentrated in certain areas and not and diluted yeah. in certain areas. It's not balanced yeah. the way USA is, you know, um, and therefore probably the, you know, the job opportunities also remain wherever the concentration is. Yeah. 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 There are the financial hub, there are, there are the tourist hub, whatever it is. So which are these areas, you know, that the students should uh, be focusing towards maybe foreign admission so that they get settled, not only in the institution, but also the job yeah. at a later point of time. Yeah, I think that is very similar to how India has emerged, like the, the destinations like Bangalore, Hyderabad, Chennai, Mumbai, Delhi, right? So if uh, somebody is coming from a TS2 city, uh, he'll always prefer moving to these cities uh, for jobs. So similarly, um, um, but yes, I would say still India has a lot of opportunities in like across 
the country, but uh, yes, Canada, if you see that, uh, it, so Ontario, and, and let, let me talk about cities. So Toronto, Vancouver and Montreal and Calgary are, are the top cities. Uh, that's where you have the largest concentration of people, students, employers. So that that's where, and if you look at these, uh, uh, all these cities, uh, they're all bordering US. So the entire Canada where oh. you see a lot of growth is all bordering US uh, because on, on the west, where you have Seattle, Seattle is just uh, about 100 kilometers from where we are. Um, so um, so that, that's the west side and on the east side, if you see Toronto and uh, Montreal, and there are some other cities out there which will repeat, have, which just, repeat the, just, just repeat the four names that you just mentioned for the benefit. So uh, Toronto is the biggest, of course, uh, Vancouver, mm. Montreal and Calgary. Okay, fine. Four cities. Good. Guys, yeah. please note, please take a note of it. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, we go to the next question, uh, sir, for you. Um, if, uh, you know, I, 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 if I, if I'm a student and I say my, my admission to, you know, Canadian college and university was the last struggle point, And after that, the placement cell could probably help me out. They'll take care of my job just the way it happens in the Indian context. Is that really true? Do the institutions generally in Canada bridge the campus to corporate gap easily, or there's another way, there's another way out? So, um, the students need to struggle by themselves, so, are left to struggle so, by themselves. To, to, to be, no, they don't uh, leave the students to struggle on themselves, for sure, uh, to be honest. But then the system is different from how uh, it's in India. Like uh, in, in India, we have a dedicated placement cell. We also have a uh, employment service specialist cell, uh, but, the, but the whole idea of employment service, uh, ESS, we call them popularly, is, is to have a wide network of corporates uh, with them, uh, which... Uh, so it's it's more of a marketplace which they create uh, rather than giving them dedicated placements. Uh, they would encourage like just right from the corp. It starts right from the corp, and they work with the students. But if you talk about the campus placements concept, that does not exist in Canada. Um, so uh, there are no campus placements outrightly, but then a student is expected to work holistically on his profile, whether that's uh, working on the resume, communication skills, on, on his uh, skills related to his course, and then networking is an important skill which the student needs to know when he, when he travels to any international destination, because whether it's through LinkedIn, whether it's through uh, your, your, your circle. So that is something what the institutions would do, that they will have a lot of employees and they would uh, have them on a platform and where the students can explore options. And then they strongly encourage the students to directly connect with the employers. And, 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 and the whole idea is that an international education has given them that important push on their profile so that they are more recognized by these employers to get their first kickstart into their career. Connected question to you uh, about the same thing about the employment possibility. During the program, uh, in Canada, two years, three years, four years, whatever it is, if they're undergoing. So the students need to be, you know, doing something, some efforts to improvise on their employment skills or at a later point of time, or they can go subtle. Uh, what is the preparation uh, students could do while they are doing the program for an employment perspective? Uh, I think networking is, would be the most important aspect. Um, while I understand the student will be very, very busy uh, when a student is abroad, uh, he doesn't have the comfort of his own. Um, so he's managing a lot of stuff, uh, not only the academics and then uh, academics uh, could be a major uh, part of your daily schedule. Um, so academics and then probably uh, finances, part-time job, relations, family, friends, uh, and, uh, and uh, a student would also be homesick as well at some point in time. So. Uh, uh, it's, it's quite complicated, uh, but at the same time, once the student is settled into it, so he may uh, have some time once he's initially settled. I would not recommend doing much in the first six to nine months, I would say. And then if your institution is encouraging you to have a like something like a co-op, which is a great point because that's a hands-on. But at the same time, you can always uh, join uh, your societies and clubs in the institution. Uh, the whole idea is to network with as many people as possible so that... Uh, uh, and because Canada as an industry works on reference, right? Um, so uh, it really is encouraged, like we, we strongly recommend students to have develop a, a good network of people around them uh, who may have industry connects to help them get their first break. Uh, okay, there's a connected question which is coming up. Uh, I think uh, let me take one of the questions which is uh, coming up from the audience. Uh, to what extent is a part-time 
working off campus a realistic option for students? Is it easier, easier than US? Um, I do not really honestly know how easy or difficult is it to find a job in uh, US part time, but as like, but I do get uh, uh, the feedback from the students. Um, getting a part time job in any of these countries is not difficult, is what I know. Uh, because there's always demand. Uh, these are these are probably these are like whether these are uh, so customer service desk jobs or whether these are the students are doing multiple kind of jobs. Like the students are doing uh, like what we call as uh, Uber deliveries, and and they just keep keeping themselves busy. And all these jobs are very well respected here, and and, and importantly, it gives them money. So I think finding a part time job. Uh, I think just requires two skills because I and I assume that most of these students would start with a job which is customer facing, so they just need to have that basic customer service skills, uh, which is uh, I would say integral to most of these students uh, from from India because of the culture, and B uh, it will require decent communication skills because you are expected to communicate in English. So if you have these two skills, which any student from India I would say who is aspiring abroad would have, so finding a part time job would not be difficult at all. Just come prepared with a basic resume, which you can float around, and sooner or later you'll end up getting that job. All right, that was during the program. Now, actually, um, if if I'm a student and I have completed all the program, the entire yes. program, and uh, if I don't get a job instantly, because you said that uh, sometimes yes. the the, the, yes. the campus facilities, uh, sorry, the campus recruitment yes. facilities may not be. Uh, yes. It will create a gap for me. So, do I have to leave Canada immediately, or there is something which is allowed by the government? Visa point of view. So, yeah. so that that's what yeah, I think Canada as a country is very progressive and very pro international students. So, for us, if you're coming into a recognized institution and you're finishing a a, a two year study, you get a three years of postgraduate work permit. Mm -hmm. And and if you're studying less than that, uh, which might be the case of say a postgraduate diploma or masters, which might be one year. Um, then you end up getting at least one year work permit. So that that's how it is. So uh, government gives you time to stay back, uh, look for jobs, and just like and that is why it's very popular because you get that opportunity to uh, if and if you have not been able to network or if things did not go in your favor, then uh, that that window allows you to kind of go ahead with your search and sooner or later you end up with a job. So you don't have to leave the country. That's for sure. Um, you get a buffer time. And in many uh, cases, uh, that's, as I said, it could be more than a year, which is sufficient for you to land up with your first job. And then you translate into a work permit. Yeah. All right, great. Uh, we are almost trying to wind up now, but before we do, uh, would you like to have uh, some brief told to us uh, about the Sprotshaw College and CTU and uh, what, why sure. it can be a study of choice for undergraduate sure. students? Sure, sure. Thanks, Rajiv, uh, for asking me that. So, I, um, as, as City University, it's, it's a U.S. university, um, and that's how these two countries are so closely linked. Uh, that uh, being a U.S. university, they're having its campuses in four different places in Canada, and Vancouver one is being the most popular. So, we are offering a bachelor degree uh, in management. So, it's an undergraduate degree, and the beauty of our program is that normally the undergraduate degree, as we discussed, is a four years degree. We have made the whole model a, a fast track model where the student can finish the entire bachelor degree in as less time as 2.5 years. And if you add the additional co-op of six months, you can still finish that bachelor degree in three years in which you have spent six months in the industry. So I think that's a plus point. And you are earning a U.S. degree by being in Canada, which is completely recognized by U.S., of course, because it being by virtue of being a U.S. university. At the same time, it has complete recognition and backing of the Canadian immigration which means that when the student finishes the undergraduate degree, he is eligible for up to three years of postgraduate work permit. So that's that's on the management uh, degree. Uh, but the beauty about this, again, another top program uh, feature about this program is that uh, with the first year, Sprotshaw, it's a university pathway. So it provides the student a lot of that. It's, it's, it's actually a mix of that traditional and non-traditional programs because in the first year, you can always choose a, a, a program in which you would want to specialize. So our specialization starts in the first year. A, student, a commerce student could be coming to a business program. A humanities student could be coming for a tourism or hospitality. A scientist student could be coming for healthcare or an early childhood education. So a student starts their journey at this with Sprotshaw College. They finish a year and then they transition into university into a management program and then moves out with double credentials up to three years of postgraduate work permit and recognition from a US institution, which, which is of course a lifelong recognition. Uh, so that, that's something what we are offering in very brief. 
and we encourage students and one uh, uh, point which always goes in our favor is that we are located in the downtown Vancouver uh, which Vancouver in itself is a, is a city that is preferred by many students because it has the most moderate weather among the four cities that we just talked about uh, uh, sometime before and it's one of the most livable cities. Moderate weather um, uh, so um, the snow is minimum and while some of the other cities could really get cold in winter. So that's the advantage of Vancouver and it's very beautiful um, and it's very student friendly. Um, so that, that's something which goes completely in our favor. Great. Any final set of summaries or advice to the students intending to go with the Canadian education goal, sir? Um, so, uh, so we covered a lot of aspects um, and I would like to firstly thank Dr. Rajiv, um, uh, founder of Asia Asia, to provide me with this opportunity. We have been uh, in constant touch for the last two years now and it has been a great pleasure working with your team. I've personally been there and met uh, the entire team in the office and, uh, and, and I really uh, appreciate the efforts that your team is putting. Again, pre-COVID, post-COVID and, and this session is, a, uh, is an example of that, how, how that how uh, aligned we are with the students' uh, goals and expectations. And at the same time, uh, as we just talked uh, today about Canada, uh, it's it's a great destination. Um, uh, I, I've seen it from inside. Uh, Canada as a country is very safe, as I said, that's the main factor. Uh, it's, it's considered as a powerhouse for in, international education. This is how I started my presentation. Uh, it's a very attractive destination for reasons that we discussed, uh, whether it's... Uh, uh, whether it's cost friendly, I would say, as compared to many other international destinations, um, whether it's the op opportunities in terms of college versus um, uh, university and uh, the uh, friendly post study work rights, uh, which helps the student to stay back in Canada and uh, start earning because yes, I understand there will be financial load when the student uh, moves into an international country. So this, this opportunity to stay back. And then one more thing that most of the students, uh, uh, and this is again related to immigration, that, uh, and there is a survey that, that says that 60% of the students, international students who come to Canada, uh, aspire to become a permanent resident of, uh, resident of Canada. And that number is even higher when it comes to Indian students. And, and the number goes around 85 to 90% of the Indian students who come to Canada, or I would say the South Asian students, would want to be a permanent resident in the future. And because the country is so friendly in terms of uh, providing that immigration opportunity, or there's a very, very clear pathway from student to work to a permanent resident. And that is why Canada has always been popular in the last 10 years. They have been proactive in promoting the immigration aspect and which kind of secures a student when he's thinking of taking a study abroad tradition. So I think with that, I would like to conclude. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ahmed Kumar, for being on, on our panel this Saturday. It was really nice having you. It is one of the, um, it's one of the interesting sessions that we've had uh, in the recent past, uh, and I'm sure the, the audience also benefited a lot out of this. Viewers, we will see you again next time, same day, same time. That is Saturday, 5th of September, 2020, 7.30 p.m. India time. Thanks a lot, everyone, for being Thank on you. our show. Thank goodbye. You goodbye. Goodbye, and take care. Thank, Thank you. you. Goodbye.